Because you can't, Gaffer. You're taking him for service. No, I tried, but he got stuck up the chapel steps. <laughs> Good morning, oh master. I didn't hear the tortured scream of the mortally wounded crossfly. What happened? Did your brakes finally go? Along with the rest of the car, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me somebody's stolen it. How did he manage to get the guide dog into his boot? For your information, Betty, no one has stolen it. It is merely chosen the middle of the pedestrian death run in Derby Road as a no-go area. So how did you get here? I catch the lift on the back of the vicar's moped. <laughs> Since when, the new organ fund has taken on an entirely different meaning. Well, what's gone wrong with your car, then? How do I know? It's never been right since I fixed it. Didn't you get anyone out to it? Of course I did. I called the AA. And what did he do? Took one look at it, gave me the phone number of the RAC. <laughs> that could be due to the fact that you aren't a member. I offered to join them. I asked him to quote me for a morning's membership. <laughs> he was not amused. I remember the time when those lads used to salute you using all five fingers. By the way, Harry's been in with that more money gleam in his eye about three times. They're never satisfied that lot. I don't know what they do with all the money I give them. Well, maybe they use it to pay all the bills their wives give them. I'll handle financial negotiations, all right? <laughs> Start typing. Don't argue, just do it. Ah, there you are, Gaffer. Harry, just, just in at the right time to settle an argument. Is it redundant or redundant? <laughs> eh? That is exactly what I said. Redundant with an A. Ah, cut a comic capers, Gaffer. This is serious. Do you know that we've now had the wolf at the door so long that the council have now complained twice about me keeping pets? Yes, well, if we let the one at our door in, it would starve to death. Oh, come on, come on. Don't you start pleading poverty again. I don't believe a single word of that guff. Harry, what would you say if I told you I was having to sell my car to keep this place going? I would say that we keep it going till about tomorrow lunchtime. <laughs> sell your car. I'll believe that when I see it. And you will. At the moment, it's doing very little in the middle of Derby Road. So go and get it back here by Oka by some and we'll tart it up and sell it to the highest bidder. All right. I'm going to be keeping an eye on you all the way. Good song, that, you know. You shouldn't have really. <laughs> Don't you ever worry about the things you get up to? Me worry? It's like serving a sentence before you committed the crime. What have I got to worry about? Harry, when you turn up with another car after pleading poverty. Yes, well, we'll burn that bridge when we've crossed it. <laughs> my main problem at the moment is getting my old one as far as Smiling Sam Smith's place before the staples come out. Smiling Sam Smith's? You're not going to go to that charlatan, are you? No. Oh, admit he'd probably sell his granny's motorised bus chair as a geriatric hatchback, but <laughs> he does have one overwhelming advantage. His garage is the only one I know that's downhill most of the way. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, you can have ordinary bacon, but you have to do your own streaks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello, Fred. For a moment there, I thought you were a human being. I don't know why I bother coming in here, you know, Henry. I can, I can get insults cheaper at the supermarket. And on Thursdays, it's double insolence day. Ah, supermarkets. Listen, they may carry your wife to the car in a wire basket for you, but when did you last year a checkout girl ask after your granddad's prostate? <laughs> anyway, what do you want? Usual half-pound packet of deep frozen flatulence? No. As a matter of fact, I want a couple of things from my car. Your car? Ah, half a dozen eggs and a pound of lard. You what? <laughs> The eggs are to mend the leaks in the radiator, the large for the back axle. I'm sick to death of hearing about your car. It's just a load of rubbish. You don't seem yourself today, Henry. Congratulations, but what's wrong? <laughs> Woman trouble. Woman trouble? I thought you said that your marriage was going well. Aye, very well. Indeed, it's almost gone. <laughs> I was planning on getting a decree nicely for my birthday, but I'm beginning to wonder now. So what's the matter? Insufficient grounds in your coffee? Too many grounds. Rugby ground, cricket ground, football ground. I caught her all over the place with a milkman. No, double cream Dennis, the cousin over of the co-op. Uh, look, I wonder, why is it? It's always the husband, the last one to know. Probably because he's so busy knocking over the local barmaid to know. 
Mind you, I did wonder about that milk mill. Yes, you'll probably find that this is the only house in the road that covers the walls are insulated with strawberry yoghurt. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if you've actually caught her in flagrento dyslexia, then what's, what's the problem? To be her at the vulture, that's the problem. She's a distant cousin and she started coming round. Has she? Well, you should play your cards a bit better. You never know, she might stop coming round and start coming across. <laughs> Well, you don't understand, but you see, when Vera Hitchcock starts calling on somebody in our family, we know they're on the way to the cemetery. I mean, all we can do is just check the insurance and warn the vicar. Three weeks later, ham sandwiches and tears in the parlour, Vera picking over the spoils in the kitchen. Well, I mean, look at me brother Reg. There was nothing wrong with him, that a good cough wouldn't clear. But Vera finished up grabbing his antiques. <laughs> Must be a painful way to go, that. <laughs> well, now... I'm getting rid of the missus. I think she's got her eye on this shop and I'm very worried. Well, you should put your foot down. Mind you, when I do that, I usually find out I'm standing next to a cow fat. <laughs> Look, I was wondering if somebody couldn't sort of distract her. Now, that chap at your place, Ginger, he's very good in that direction. Oh, yes, yes. I believe he's very good from every direction. <laughs> and he usually comes to work every morning from a different one, but... <laughs> While you were talking, I was just thinking, it's not the sort of thing I'd normally offer, you know, but I don't like to see a mate in a muck. Because if you are talking about Vera Hitchcock, the walking biology lesson from Warlock Street Primary School when I were there, I think I know somebody who can help you out. You can? Who? You're looking at him. Me? I know Vera Hitchcock. I used to chase around the bike sheds till she caught me. <laughs> Honestly, Fred, I don't know how to thank you. I was coming to that, actually. You, Henry, are going to buy a car. Me? I can't afford a car. I know, Henry, but you're buying the car for me. But you're going to buy it when Harry Campbell, my worthy shop steward, is with you so that he thinks it's yours. I'll explain everything. Can I use your phone? Ah. Right. You see, I can't buy a new car because I've told that lot I can't afford any pay rises. But if Harry Campbell thinks it's yours, then afterwards I can come round and uh, make out I'm borrowing it from you from time to time. Oh, I, said, I didn't know what you meant until you explained. Now I'm completely baffled. <laughs> hey, hello, Bert. I was hoping to catch you between sloping off and nodding off. Is, uh, <laughs> is Harry there? I'll put him on, will you? I'll explain everything. Oh. Uh, hello, Harry. Oh, I'm at Henry Dodds. He's, uh, he's looking to buy a car. I, I tried to sell him mine, but for some strange reason, he wants one that works. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I wouldn't normally ask you, but he, uh, he doesn't know much about motoring, you see. He, uh, he thinks comprehensive covers something to do with a school roof. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, Harry. It was only a joke. Well, I, was, I was wondering, could you, uh, could you meet him at Smiling Sam Smith's place during your dinner break? Uh, well, come in two hours later tomorrow, like you always do. <laughs> right, hey, just make sure you get him a good one. Right, one o'clock. Lovely. How's, uh, how's my car going? Jammed in reverse? Oh, well, well I don't know. Better paint the headlights red, the police won't know whether you're coming or going. <laughs> long legs, you know, to reach the pedals. Yeah, right. Oh, hello. My name's Moffat. I was just passing by. I saw that uh, pinky movie Daimler out there. 750, is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. Lovely car. Right, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> so, over the expense, eh? <laughs> 
Right. Smiling Sam, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you. Ah, please, please, Mr. Moffat, it isn't seven pounds fifty pence. Cost more than that to use our loo. <laughs> I'm glad I went before I came then, but uh, <laughs> well, make me laugh. How much is it? Seven hundred and fifty pounds. The car's only done twenty thousand miles. What that? Twenty thousand miles? <laughs> That's done more than twenty thousand miles on one wheel alone. On only the one careful driver. Yes, well, it's not him I'm bothered about. It's all the rotten ones. It's all. <laughs> It's a lonely vehicle, that. Has a sort of unattainable beauty. You, you see that, uh, you see the white roller next to it, marked 800? Do you, do, you, do you really think that's worth that much? Worth every penny of a thousand, I'd say. A model like that. 800 is giving it away. <laughs> uh, go on, then, I'll take it. You will? What, the Rover? No, the money, that's the one I've just brought in. <laughs> Well, listen, Squire, if I need a clown, I'll buy a circus. I'll allow you 50 quid on that heap of scrap. All right, well, take that 50 quid off the 751, and so long as the answer's 400, I'll have it. 500, providing it's cash on the nail. Right, providing the cash on the nail can be on easy terms. Agreed. Providing the easy terms is 300 down and the rest within the hour. Done. Providing, of course, you go along with a little deception on the two chaps I sent round to collect it. Is it a deal? Oh, may as well be. I've run out of providings anyway. <laughs> Could we have a quick recap on who bought what? <laughs> and for how much? I wouldn't really bother. You'd only probably get confused. What's this in now, An action replay standing still doing up. I was just admiring that car you asked me to check out for Henry Dodd. Oh, yeah, yeah. great motors, those Daimlers, but uh, what would you bring it back here for? Oh, the great motors indeed, especially that one, and dirt cheap. Yes, that's, uh, that's really what I thought. And of course, seeing as I helped tend me, you know, towards getting it, perhaps with a bit of luck, you'll lend it to me from time to time now that I've sold mine. Wow, that could be a wee bit difficult, Gaffer. He didn't buy it. What do you mean he didn't buy it? It's there. Ah, uh, but Henry wasn't. He didn't turn up, so I bought it for myself. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you can't buy it. It's mine. I mean, it's in Henry Dobbs. I've got a bit of paper here says it belongs to me. Well, how could you buy a motor car? It's not five minutes since you were telling me you couldn't afford to take a deep breath at a chip shop door. Oh, yes, I was short of food money and short of beer money, but I had a good bit of car money put by. <laughs> Nevertheless, I could not have afforded it if you had not had that agreement with the car company. Agreement? Uh, what agreement? Oh, the salesman said, if you're from Moffat's, it will cost you 200. <laughs> 200? From 750? Gaffer, I just do not know how you managed to wangle these discounts. <laughs> See you. You're a businessman to your fingertips. <laughs> and these fingertips are going to massage an explanation out of Henry Dodd's throat. <laughs> Can I have a rude word, Henry? Oh, Fred, just the chap. You remember me cousin, Vera Hitchcock? Oh, hello, Freddy. You haven't changed much. No, well, really, there wasn't much to change, was there? <laughs> I mean, once I got over my boyhood conceit, I was well near perfect. You still got those go-to-bed eyes. Oh, yes. And unfortunately, now they're in a stay-up-all-night face. <laughs> She's made a lovely woman, hasn't she, Fred? Yes, yes. I'd get her to make me woman if I could afford the materials. <laughs> Let's see, you married Doris Petty, didn't you? Still the same old Doris, I suppose. Oh, she's changed a lot. Mostly my bad habits. I was surprised at you marrying her. I didn't think she was your type. I remember she was into this uh, women's lib some years ago. That's right, yeah, there were a bunch of them, you know. Eventually they all burnt their bras. After that, they seemed to lose a lot of support. <laughs> Don't forget your bread. Oh! 
Why don't you take her for a spin, go past the old school, revive old memories? Why don't you take out a patent in stupidity? Well, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong? I've sold my car, you weren't there, Harry's got the one I should have had, now I haven't got one at all. What am I going to take her for a spin in a twin tub? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but I was otherwise engaged. You can get your old car back again. What, from smiling someone who's allowed me 50 quid on it? The only man I know who ensures his dandruff against third-party fire and theft. Here, I've got me bread. Oh, it's worth a try anyway, I suppose. Been nice seeing you again, Vera. Hey, wait for me, Fred. I'll buy you a drink, for old time's sake. Who told you today's password? <laughs> Can I have a word? Now, if there's anything wrong with that car, I'm sure something can be worked out. How would I know if there's anything wrong with it when you sold it to the wrong man? We did. Now, the company do, of course, deny responsibility for the action of any employee, except where the consequences of such action are such as to preclude liability by the company. Don't come that double bunny with me. I wrote the manual. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? You're taking chances. At the very least, I want my deposit back. Now, now calm, calm down, Mr. Moffat. 300, wasn't it? Let's see. Unless our bill for extensive repairs to your gearbox, which amounts to £300 exactly. Oh, there's a coincidence. All right, I'll just have the car back. Ah, well, I'm afraid we've just this minute sold it. You what? What naturalised moron would you get to buy a load of uncracked rubbish like that? Uh, could I? Hello, Gaffer. I just bought your old car. <laughs> I see you found one. A very good job, too, sir. There's your agreement. You must be mad buying that, Charlie. That's been sprayed twice with super glue to stick the rust to the dust. Look here. When am I going to get my car ride? Here, you'll get a car ride when I've got a car to give you a ride in. Hey, I could treat you and the lady for a ride round if you like, Gaffer. You know the car. You could point out all its little idiot what's it. No, thank you, Charlie. On the other hand, yes, please, Charlie. Do you mind, uh, Stopping off at Henry Dodds, I want to buy a pair of ladies' tights. Oh, that's very kind of you, Freddy. They're not for you, Vera. You, you want to use them as an emergency fan belt, don't you, Gaffer? <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> right, try it now. <coughs> hang on. Hey, hang, hang on, hang on. <laughs> right, try it again. It won't go at all now. Well, that just proves it then, doesn't it? You better get out and get under and start hitting some it. Well, come on, it shouldn't take you more than a long time. Hey, do you expect me to sit here just twiddling my thumbs? Uh, no, no, of course not, love. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll ring my rich friend, Harry, get him to come over and, and drive you home. Fred Muffet, Harry. I, 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 I was wondering if you could help me out. I'm in a bit of a jam. Well, I, I was driving this, like, uh, female round, you know, and I've uh, broken down in Victoria Road. <coughs> Aye. Uh, well, no, I just wondered if you could, like, come and take her home before her husband gets back from work. <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, don't breathe the word of this to your missus. Well, you know what she's like. Straight in one ear and out of her mouth. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> well, is one. Right. Here, look up here. Thanks very much, Harry. It's very kind of you. The uh, the lady will tell you where she lives. Hang on a minute. Your back door's open. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Let's go. in your nails again. It's just as well you don't have to clock on or you'd have given yourself the sack coming in at this time. I know, it was a little bit of predestination. I got off the bus one stop too soon. Bus? Didn't you get your new car then? Not only no, I didn't. I've lost the one I already had. <laughs> I knew there would be trouble. You know, Betty, you were turning knowing it would into an exact science. Is that Ian? In trouble. He's got an eye like last year's black pudding. Yeah. Sounds promising, that. <laughs> Gaffer, you really landed me in it without fear. That's like t trying to struggle with a sex mad in a tube. Yes, well, you should have punctured it. You know the trouble, don't you? 
She fancies you. She's obviously fallen in love with your naturally curly pound notes. Yeah, well, somebody must have seen her with me and, and, and phoned the missus. I denied everything like you asked me to, but then she found a pair of tights in the back seat. <laughs> she did. And then the fudge hit the fan. Oh, I had to get rid of the car. It was leading me into bad habits. Oh, she spelt it out in no uncertain manner. Yes, I can see where she put the full stop. <laughs> but I tell you what, Larry, you've done me a favour, so I'll do you one. I'll take that car off your hands. Oh, I got rid of that already. Got rid of it, who too? Henry Dodd. Henry Dodd? Ah, but he said something very strange. He said how he hoped you might pay him the rest of the money. But I don't know what's going on here. But I think I'll go and sweep out the picket line groove in the yard. <laughs> Just in case we need it. <laughs> so, Henry got you your car after all. Yes, maybe. But things aren't usually as simple as that in life. Usually when everything's going very well, it usually means that something's wrong. Uh, Henry? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Fred Moffat. I was uh, I was just wondering, when can I come round and pick up that car? What do you mean you've decided to keep it? Well, it's the wife. She came back to me when she found out I got a car. I think she was afraid of getting foot and mouth disease sitting on all those milk crates. Anyway, the point is this. I'm hanging on to this car now. Better a milk-free diet with a wife than a breath-free diet with Vera. Ta-ra! I think I'll send him a do-it-yourself embalming kit. What's wrong? What's wrong? For every action, there's an equal and opposite second thought. He's decided to keep the car. Isn't it marvellous? Your enemies you can trust, it's your friends you have to watch out for. Gather! Vera's coming up the yard. You've got to hide me, quick! Where no, does it say so in your contract of employment? Please, Gather! The wife will kill me! Come on! I'll forget about any wage claims. Why didn't you say so? Right, come on. In the boardroom, under the table. And why are you looking like a dog with stereo lampposts? <laughs> because, Betty, I think we have discovered the ultimate weapon. Vera, you haven't got a spare pair of tights in your drawer. <laughs> what on earth for? Because I think uh, I'm going to get my old car back very shortly. Hey, ready? I'm sorry to burst in like this, but I was wondering, could I have a word with Harry? Oh, no, but I'll tell you something. It's a bit of a coincidence because Charlie Hotchkiss was asking about you. You remember, Charlie, that... Playboy machinist of ours. Well, he's got his car going again. Now, why don't you pop in the workshop and say hello? Go on. <laughs> Be my guest. <laughs> I love the pair you've got on. He's a Presents the time he spends on paperwork and VAT. Keeps the money that the taxman doesn't see. 